Here at Ashley Dean, it's a very highly productive dairy farm. And the farm grows high quality grass, but it wasn't always like this. Five years ago, this was a dryland farm, but because it's so dry here, summer droughts mean that very little grows over the summer period. And it was not possible until irrigation was made available that this farm was converted into high production dairy farms. The two major environmental issues which we've been researching are to do with nitrogen and to do with carbon. When irrigation started at this site and in intensive dairying, a lot more nitrogen was being put into the system. That nitrogen comes in from urea fertilizer to make the grass grow. It comes in from effluent from the dairy ponds being sprayed onto the, onto the grasslands. It also comes in from nitrogen fixing plants which are used as part of the sward. So there's very high amounts of nitrogen coming in which weren't previously going in when the farm was dryland. Now these soils are amazingly stony and they have very high infiltration rates. So when it rains, the water moves through them very rapidly and it takes the nitrogen with it and that nitrogen goes into the groundwater and that water drains and that can eventually go out into the Selwyn catchment and into Lake White Horace. But the second issue is all about carbon. We know that um, soil carbon is really important for two reasons. If we can increase the amount of carbon in soils, then those soils become much more resilient to climate events. They can hold more water, they can hold more nutrients, and they're just very good for sustainable agriculture. So higher carbon is better than lower carbon. But secondly, if we could take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and store it into soils, then on a global scale, we could reduce the carbon dioxide concentrate in the atmosphere, help mitigate climate change and keep the temperature increase within the critical 1.2 to 2 point degrees increase that we're anticipating. That's why it's so important for increasing soil carbon, but at the same time, reducing nitrogen losses from these systems. Lincoln University established the Ashley Dean Research and Development Station five years ago, specifically to help conduct research to solve some of the environmental problems that agriculture was creating especially to find ways to help farmers to reduce nitrogen losses. Ashley Dean is also a 200 hectare commercial dairy farm. The research that's conducted and the findings from that research is relevant to other farms of that scale and in these conditions under irrigation. What Ashley Dean provided was a large scale opportunity to make measurements at the paddock scale as well as at the field plot scale. It also allowed us, because we were establishing Ashley Dean Research and Development Station at the same time as the Manaki Fenua led research program, we could identify large areas which we retained as dry land and larger areas which we then irrigated, allowing a direct comparison of irrigated versus non-irrigated land. So the starting point was that we had the premise that if we could increase carbon inputs to the soil, we could reduce nitrogen leaching losses. So we came here with our specialized equipment for measuring carbon exchange and also nitrogen leaching. And we deployed them in this field, which at that time was deep-rooted lucerne, which we thought would increase the carbon inputs. So after four years of measurement, we found out that although irrigation did in fact increase productivity, the site was not in fact gaining carbon, but it was actually losing carbon. And that's because a lot of this extra biomass that was grown was actually taken away by harvest or grazing. The trade-off is, for instance, when you graze the site and leave a bit of carbon behind, that can reduce the amount of carbon that's lost from the system. On the one hand, you have CO2 losses, which contributes to rising atmospheric CO2 concentrations. So that's a greenhouse gas issue, and that's really a global issue. On the other hand, nitrogen leaching reduces the water quality, which is more of a local issue. To Waihora is a, a major mahinga kai. Uh, it's a critical resource, not only for, for Ngaitahu and many of the hapu around this lake, but it's also for the wider community. 
The lake is probably the most dominant ecosystem in this region. You know, being able to monitor and assess them is absolutely critical to the health and the well-being of this mahinga kai. Eventually everything ends up in this lake, so the flow of the water from the, from the Ashley Dean will eventually end up at Te Waihora. And that's why you know, we need to get a sense of the link between different forms of production, even, even different types crops for instance that are used in farms and indeed different management systems. So we need to try and develop a really good understanding of how those kinds of activities will have an impact on um, indeed to Waihora. The, the focus of our research is to try and understand essentially the nature of impact and to try and develop a better understanding of how different types of production activity will have an impact eventually on, on lakes such as to Waihora. Environment Canterbury is a regional council. Our role is protection of the environment and allowing for a good standard of living for our people in the Canterbury region. The key issues facing Canterbury are twofold. It's water quality and it's climate change. Those are both interlinked, especially when you start talking about agriculture, greenhouse gas emissions, nutrient losses. These are all intertwined and that's why this combined research at Ashley Dean is really important. It's, it's through research programs that look at multiple issues, look at the response, the possible mitigations, and then working closely with end users such as ourselves, that you start seeing the gains from this type of research. When we look at water quality, the, the, one of the big challenges for Canterbury is that it's a groundwater issue. Now, what that means is, the amount of nutrient that goes through soils into the groundwater is critical. So when you're on light soils, very stony soils, it's that that really matters for something like the lake behind us because it's the groundwater coming through, but it's what goes into the light soils because that moves through very easily on those stony places that makes the really big difference. The project's been really successful. We, we now know an awful lot more than what we did at the start around how different land management practices on these very stony soils um, influences nutrient leaching and soil carbon stocks. At the start, we pretty much had virtually no data on this, and now we've got some really good data. Also, through the project, a number of PhDs have been completed, which has enabled a lot of capability development, which will be good for research in this area in the future. It's really important that we, we maintain soil carbon. The findings over the last five years from the work we've been doing here is that soil carbon has been decreasing depending on the grazing and the irrigation regime. But if we want long-term sustainability in our agricultural systems, it's critical that we do maintain increases in soil carbon. And we're also helping to um, mitigate climate change by removing that CO2 from the atmosphere and storing it in the soil.